Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the Mystical Archive from the new set, Strix Haven. And I do like it, I do like the concept of it, and I think the cards look great. And I will be buying into it. And you might think, oh, you told us not to buy into standard cards. Yes, I did. I still very much believe that standard, until it returns back to the local game stores, I, at least in my store, am not going to carry it, I'm not going to sell it, I'm not going to buy it until I see that I can get eight players to draft it. As soon as eight players, con or if enough people ask me, hey, can you can we do a draft, and there's eight of them, then yes, I will carry the stock, because that makes sense at that point in time. There is enough demand for me to do a draft. But this is not, it, I do not consider this standard cards. Uh, these are cards like Regrowth, God's Willing, these are either EDH, Tainted Pack, it's a fantastic EDH card. These are either EDH cards. Natural Order is really good too. Uh, surprisingly reprint because they did reprint it in Eternal Masters. These are cards that are modern or most likely EDH playable. And so they're not in my purview. Even though they are available in the Strixhaven set. I don't view them quite the same as I would view like a Strixhaven Onyx or something like that. So, the artwork looks good. Uh, Harmonize looks great. Uh, again, you can argue whether or not these cards are powerful or not powerful. I mean, some of them seem to be, like, really good. Like, Mind's Desire would be a fun card for EDH. And some of them, like, Defiant Strike is like, oh, how did this one get in? Uh, so, Defiant Strike is kind of a weird one to get in. But, nonetheless, maybe you play it in some type of white storm deck. I don't know. Artwork looks good. The price, so now I'll get into the real reason I'm interested in these. The price point, I think, is low. So I've used the analogy of Dragon Maze before. Dragon Maze is probably one of the worst sets, if not the worst set in history in terms of expected value. And I remember when a fat pack was going for about $20, and I said, no, that can't possibly, in standard, I was like, that can't possibly be true. There's a chance to pull a fetch land, a, a shock land, there's a chance for a shock land, even though it's not that great. Um, there is still a chance, and you know you did have Voice of Resurgence. That was before the reprinting of it over and over again. And even at the token, the token was kind of valuable at the time for Voice. So it really depends on your price point. I'm not saying these cards are amazing, amazing. I mean, look at Faithless Looting. That's actually the real artwork. When I looked at Faithless Looting the first time, I almost could not believe that was real. I thought that was somebody on M MS Paint, like maybe a child, and that's what they came up with. And I was like, oh, okay. And I obviously, I would not consider that artwork premium, right? <laughs> this isn't what I would call collectible. So um, back to the issue at hand. It's pretty fascinating because the prices are very low for what they are. And... It's not just this set. It's all, you know, cards on the list and all these things. They're being reprinted. Time Spiral Remastered. I think prices are pretty good to pick them up. If you if you play Magic, this is exactly what you want. You want the reserve list to be left alone. And that's going to be its own little segment of Magic. MTG Financiers doing their own little, uh, you know, upselling, if you will. And then you want to have playable cards that are really, really good. And this is what it is. I think overall... Uh, my general consensus is this is very good for Magic. And when you talk about the value of these cards and the uniqueness of the cards, and you know, it's almost like the Japanese uh, Planeswalkers. Um, the Japanese Planeswalkers with the anime art, that to me is attractive. I, I think that's collectible. And this is collectible because they're actually good cards. Um, they're actually eternal cards. And it doesn't represent a standard set. It's just like extra goodies. And what happens is people are going to open them for standard cards. And they're going to resell these for profit. And the price point is low enough. So back to the Dragon Maze. I forgot about the Dragon Maze analogy. Dragon Maze is considered the worst set in like Magic history. From an EV standpoint. When it was in standard. And even now. However... If you said, hey, here's a Dragon Maze booster box for $20. A booster box for $20. I would say, yeah, that's a good deal. And that's where we are. 
do I think these cards are the most valuable cards ever printed? No. But they they are definitely undervalued. And because the people opening these standard boxes, if they're using every standard, they actually don't really need these cards. And I, I understand, yes, it's collector's edition, blah, 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 blah. Um, but these cards look pretty good. And in my opinion, you know, they not only is their art good, but the cards themselves are good, which is probably the most important part. Um, like Dark Ritual is a very good card, sees a lot of play. Growth Spiral, any type of mana acceleration, Counterspell. Uh, shock. These are playable cards in modern and playable cards in ED8s. So that's where I am with these cards. I think that they are underpriced. I think they will be underpriced for some time. It's this makes sense as a collector's edition. Standard cards do not make sense to me for collector's edition because the majority of standard cards, after they rotate, as we can see from the rotation on the throne of the Alderin even though some people are hyping it up as if this was a great investment, we can see that like, hey, the cards have dropped. People are not as interested in it. If it doesn't see play, if it doesn't see play in in an eternal format, most likely ED8s nowadays, then why would anyone want it? The demand for it is going to be less. So regardless of what imaginary price someone throws on it, the demand. So if you had 1,000 Throne of the Elder and Collector's Edition, you had a lot easier time selling that when it first came out than you do have selling it right now. Even if supposedly you can sell it for more money. The amount of people who want to buy a box of front of the Alderaan Collective Edition has vastly diminished because you do have to, the, the main subset of buyers at any given time is, oh, it's hype, it's a new product, oh, it's in standard, I can play with it. It's a standard product. I like this. Because this does not, like, Chaos Warp was like a $40, $50 card one time in an ED8 stack. The Spark, uh, Stone Rain. I think Stone Rain is still one of the best cards. One of the most annoying cards to play with. Mana Tiff is kind of an interesting one. Didn't see that one coming. These are good cards. These are cards that, yes, you make a collector's edition of them. And people will use them for a time, for a long time. This makes sense. This should be part of your collection. Should standard cards be part of our collection? No. It doesn't make any sense. Like the, the standard 90%, 90 to 95% to 99%, depending on the set, of uh, standard cards are not going to see play after rotation. So like, what are you exactly collecting? You're collecting a depreciating asset that you know will come go down to zero. Like why, why would you pay more money for like a, a, a better version of that? And not to mention what it actually does to the draft boxes, the ordinary booster boxes. It just deflates the price. I mean, it just kills EV there, which I'm not happy with. Like Time Warp, good picture, good card, at Mythic, people will play it in ED8. Demonic Tutor, again, interesting picture. It's not for me, but I could see some other people wanting it. Great card, played in every black ED8 deck possible. If it has block in the EDH deck, it's probably playing Demonic Tutor. Makes sense. Lightning Bolt. Again, I don't know why Lightning Bolt and Shock are both in the same set, but Lightning Bolt, fantastic card. So I don't see any problem with this. I like it. I think it is investable. I do think prices are low, and I think prices will continue to be low, especially after the first two weeks of cracking it. Um, I think they will dip, uh, and if you go on TCG Player, you'll be able to pick up a bunch of these for very little money. You know, people are still on Time Spiral. People are going to buy the regular versions of the these cards as well. And uh, this is kind of a unique. It's unique. I like I like the Time Warp a lot. 